This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 12, Section 2, Part 2, Example Problems. So this is all of the stoichiometry set up for our dimensional analysis problems. So I showed this to you before. So we're going to start at any one of these quantities. We're going to go to moles of substance A, that small island. Then we're going to use the coefficients from the balanced equation to come up with our mole ratio to get from substance A to substance B. And again, this is just moles to moles. But ultimately, again, we're going to want to go back to one of these other quantities for our substance B. And again, moles to these other quantities is really mole island again. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So guys, that mole, right, one mole equals those three conversions when we dealt with mole island. Avogadro's number of particles, and remember those particles can include any one of these four things, molar mass or formula mass in grams, and 22.4 liters for gases. So these are conversions that we're going to use again. Make sure that you're reading as you're writing. So guys, basically there's going to be three steps or three conversion factors. The first one is going to take our substance A quantity and convert it to moles. Second step is that new mole ratio that we just learned in the previous notes video. You need a balanced equation to get to uh, or from substance you have to substance you want. And our third uh, conversion factor is going to be from substance what we want in moles to that desired quantity that we want of that substance B. We also want to make sure not only do we want a number and a unit, so if you think about this, up until now, every conversion uh, problem, every dimensional analysis problem we've done always included a number and a unit. And I said those were really, really important. Well, for stoichiometry problems, the substance is going to be equally as important. So every single part of the setup in our dimensional analysis stoichiometry problem, you're going to see me write the number I'm dealing with, the unit, and the substance I'm dealing with. This is going to be really important because of that mole ratio because the unit is the same it's the substance that's going to be different so guys there's a nice chart in your packet um, it was a little cumbersome to kind of put that all together but this is like a condensed version of it so what does that chart really tells us well it tells us that we can start at any one of these quantities and we're going to convert it to moles that's quantity for a then we're going to use that mole ratio to get from our A to our B substance. That's all that mole ratio does. And what's this over here? Well, we can end at any one of these quantities. So for instance, <clears throat> I can start at particles A and answer of particles B. I can start at particles A and I can answer of mass B. I can start at particles A and I can end in volume B. So there's all of these magical combinations between these three quantities and these three quantities. So you can start at any one of any of these and end start, I'm sorry, start at any one of these three quantities and end at any one of these three quantities. So guys, this is just a quick mass to mass example. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly because again, the easiest thing to do is to actually do example problems, but just so you know what we're looking at. So if I start with our mass of our A substance, I would use the molar mass of our A substance to go from grams to moles. Boy, that looks like mole island. Then we basically have our unit of moles. We're going to use another conversion factor. That's that mole ratio conversion factor that we uh, just learned. And that's going to get from moles of A to our moles of B. Then, since we don't want moles, we want an actual unit, we're going to go, or a desired quantity, uh, we're going to go from moles of our B to mass of our B, again, using molar mass like mole island to get our answer. Guys, so this is really just showing you how we're using one, two, three conversion factors to get from our substance A, our quantity A, to our quantity B. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you that we're going to do it all at one shot. This is showing you that it's really three small dimensional analysis problems, but I'm going to show you that stoichiometry is just one long dimensional analysis. Another question, I talked about this before, is the given always going to be a reactant? No. Remember that that's also different combinations. We can go from reactant to product. 
We can go from product to reactant. We can say, if I have this much reactant, how much of this other reactant am I going to need? So it might be between two reactants. So there's, again, those combinations as well. So I believe there's a spot on your notes uh, to write up the whole setup, just so you understand this is what we start with. These are our three conversions. This is our answer. Here's some information of what some of these mean. And when it says formula mass here, again, this is the formula mass of what's given versus this is the formula mass of what we want. So I try to color coordinate as well, but this is really what our setup is going to look, for, look like for every single stoichiometry problem. All right, guys, so the most, most important thing to remember is that mole ratio is the only, only, only time to use those coefficients. We're not going to use those coefficients any other time except for that one middle conversion factor. Any other time, you're going to see when we used mole island, what number always went with mole? One. So you're going to need your real periodic table, your ion chart periodic table, and a calculator if you already don't have those out. So pause and make sure to get those out. So just like I said, guys, the easiest thing to do is do example problems. So number one, blah, 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 a lot of words. Oh, look at this. They already gave us a reaction. So the first thing to do is balance. So pause the video and balance that reaction. Hopefully you got that. Now we got to do a little bit of reading here. And what do I mean by this down here? Well, remember when we did mole uh, island problems, I always put the question mark in the problem of what we want. And I always put a star uh, next to the number uh, because that was going to be our starting point. Well, I'm going to do something similar with these stoichiometry problems. I'm going to put a question mark with the unit under the substance that I want. And I'm going to put the unit, uh, the number and the unit of the substance that they give me. That's going to be my starting point. So what do I mean by that? Well, it says how many liters of calcium carbide? So I'm going to put my question mark and and the unit underneath that substance are needed to react completely with 49 grams of water. So I'm going to put 49 grams of water. So it's very similar to what we did with mole island problems. But if we take out the balanced chemical equation, we take out what we want and we take out what we have. I don't have to worry about all these other words. Next, guys, first listen. I am going to have you pause, though, and come up with some molar masses throughout these examples. Uh, but, but ultimately, listen first, and then I'm going to tell you to pause and write the whole setup in your packet. So we're going to start out with not just 49 grams, but 49 grams of water. Really important. Number, unit, substance. I'm going to multiply by my conversion line. What's going to go on the bottom? Well, grams of water better go on the bottom because I want to cancel that out. But again, not just grams, but also the substance. Well, we're going to go from grams to moles. Boy, that looks like mole island. So what number always goes with mole? One. And now what number is going to go with grams? That's where you need to pause the video and come up with the mass of H2O. And only one of them, only one H2O. Hopefully you paused and came up with 18.02. All right, we're not done yet, so we're going to multiply by a conversion line. Again, moles of water on the bottom versus moles of calcium carbide on top. And this is where the substance really makes a difference. We want to know what substance goes on the bottom and what substance goes on the top. This is our new step. This is the mole ratio. This is where I need to use the coefficients from my balanced equation. So the two goes I'm sorry, ooh, the one, sorry, a one goes with the calcium carbide and two goes with the water. All right, I'm not done yet. Next line, next conversion line. All right, moles of calcium carbide on the bottom and liters of calcium carbide on top. Again, another mole island problem. So what number always goes with mole in a mole island problem? One. And what number always goes with liters when we're dealing with mole island? You got it, 22.4. Now, before you do the mathematics, I'm going to have you pause and do the mathematics. Make sure to do things in order. This is why I stressed this before. Because we have two numbers on the bottom, if you don't use the parentheses correctly, you're going to mess up the answer. So I just suggest doing everything in order and include the ones just so you don't mess up. What do I mean by that? So in my calculator, I would do 49 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 18.02 
times 1 divided by 2 times 22.4 divided by 1 equals. Go in order. So pause and make sure you can do that in your calculator. Hopefully you got this answer. 30.46, again, two decimal places. I'm fine with two decimal places, but not only the number, I've also included the unit of liters and the substance of calcium carbide. All right, now pause and make sure to get all of that information into your packet notes. All right, number two. So I'm gonna have you pause, I'm gonna have you read, I'm gonna have you balance an equation, try to come up with that balanced reaction, and then also pull out the what we want unit underneath that substance and the number that's given to us with the unit under the substance. All right, guys, so hopefully you paused and came up with the balanced equation of that. Very easy, if you have your substances correct, all the coefficients are one. The question mark should go under um, lithium bromide because it's saying uh, how many grams of lithium bromide. So question mark grams of lithium bromide there. And then I see a number here. So that 10 grams is gonna go under lithium hydroxide. All right, guys, now I'm gonna go through the problem. Are you ready? So my starting point, multiply by my conversion. I'm going to put grams of lithium hydroxide on the bottom and moles of lithium hydroxide on top. Ooh, mole island problem. So what number goes with mole? One. Now what number is going to go with grams? Again, pause the video, use your calculator and real periodic table and come up with that mass. Hopefully you came up with 23.95. All right, multiply by my conversion line. Again, moles of LiOH on the bottom and moles of LiBr. This is the only time we're using the coefficients from our balanced equation. And in this case, it's a one-to-one. -one. Multiply by my conversion line. Again, moles of LiBr on the bottom and grams of LiBr on the top. Ooh, another mole island problem. So what number goes with moles? Hopefully you're thinking to yourself one. And now how am I gonna get these grams? Again, pause the video and come up with the mass of LiBr. And hopefully you came up with that. All right, guys, now do the mathematics. Again, do them in order. 10 divided by one times one divided by 23.95 times one divided by one times 86.84 divided by one equals. All right, hopefully you paused the video. Hopefully you figured out the mathematics to be 36.26. Again, two decimal places is fine, um, but I have a number, I have the unit, and I have the substance. All right, now pause and make sure all of that gets into your notes. Number three, again, I'm gonna have you pause, I'm gonna have you read, I'm gonna have you uh, do a balanced reaction. I want you to pull out what uh, substance you want and what unit that would be, and the number they give us and unit underneath the substances in our reaction. All right, guys, hopefully you balanced and came up with that. That's a reaction I think we've seen before. And did you come up with the question mark of atoms underneath sodium and 32 liters underneath hydrogen? Hopefully you did. All right, let's do the setup. So we're going to start with the 32 liters of hydrogen times our conversion line. Liters on the bottom, moles up top. Mole island problem. What number always goes with mole? One, what number always goes with liters? Ah, 22.4, so no extra mathematics there, times my conversion line. So moles of H2 on the bottom and moles of Na on top. This is the only time we're gonna use the coefficients. So it's gonna be a two to one ratio. Multiply by our conversion line. So moles of Na on the bottom and atoms of Na on top. Ooh, another mole island problem. So one always goes with mole. And what's that magic number we're going to use with atoms? You got it, Avogadro's. So again, pause the video, do the mathematics, and hopefully you come up with the right answer. All right, hopefully you did your division and multiplying in order and got that as an answer. All right, guys, I'm hoping that this is getting a little bit easier. Make sure to pause and write all of that in your notes. All right, number four, same deal. Pause, come up with a reaction, and the question mark and number with units. Hopefully you came up with that. Hopefully you came up with that, and hopefully you came up with that. All right, guys, now pause and give it a try. Do the setup on your own. All right, guys, hopefully you paused, you came up with the setup, and now I'm gonna just show you each step and not just each individual part. So here we go, there's our first step, our first conversion factor, second conversion factor, third, 
and there's your answer. So hopefully it's starting to make some sense. We'll do some practice problems next. All right.